Love is simply one word. It's unspoken. The foundation of life. What is this all about? There is no greater narcotic on this planet. You can line them all up and it won't come close to the dopamine hit that you get from love. Because love don't even have to touch you to make you feel some kind of way special. Welcome to the Art of Love with Dr. O. I'm yours truly, Dr. O. I'm going to be on a mission to love myself. And hopefully there's somebody else out there in the process of me loving myself that can do the same thing for themselves. And we can share knowledge with each other. We can have steel sharpen steel. And you say to yourself, well, doctor, what is this doctor old thing about? I see you sitting in the barber chair. Well, historically speaking, there was a time when barbers did more surgeries than doctors did and actually made more money. Surgeries on your knees, surgeries on your your legs, bloodletting. They even took it upon themselves to to get your mental right. And all of you know, all of you know that there is no higher psychology than the barber chair, than your cosmetology chair, than your stylist chair, because we know things about our clients that probably no one else knows. And that's just the confidentiality relationship that we have with our clients. So when you see me walking around, I'm actually paying homage to the game. And that is, there was a time when barbers perform surgeries. And as far as the, the barber pole itself, you know, there was a time doing more times in uh, surgeries and different things needed to be done. They used a cloth. They had to bandage you up and that cloth was white. And of course there was blood. So you get the red and the white stripe and where did the blue come from? Well, the blue that came from the solution to actually clean the bandages. Also, some people feel patriotic about it. Some people may say the blue veins, you know, the veins and all that. Hey, whatever makes you feel good. It's all in the game. It's all the same. It's all love about this game. We call the barber game. And remember, Tune in to The Art of Love with Dr. O because you're going to get a full taste of what it is to be in this chair. And I'm going to start it off with just loving yourself. I'm on a mission to love myself. I got over 100 pounds to lose. And hopefully in the process of me just loving myself, I can inspire somebody out there to take a look in the mirror and say, you know what? I see you. I've neglected you. But from this day forward, I'm going to love you. Because remember, you you can't love nobody else in your life, not even your kids. I know you think you're loving your significant other or your wife, but if you ain't loving yourself, you ain't loving nobody else. And that should be a prerequisite that when you meet somebody, you should ask, are you loving yourself? Well, why would you ask me that? Well, because eventually those words might come out of your mouth. And if it do, I just want the reassurance that you actually know what it means and how we find out what that means is the love that we actually give ourselves. So you guys tune in every week and you're going to get a nice full plate of just the art of love. You know, a lot of my love angels out there have been watching our segment called let's talk about it. And You guys have a lot of questions and we definitely want to get to some of these questions because we have an exciting board of uh, members that would love to just dodge into your questions, you know, and answer them for you. So keep all those questions coming in and comments and things in. We'll slowly but surely try our best to get to all of them. And all we're going to do is just talk about it. Remember, you're not loving somebody if you're not communicating with them. So let's just talk about it. I've created a tree of life. Mm -hmm. I've created a tree of life. And in this tree of life, the truth is always in our face. Mm -hmm. You know, the the leaf, Mm -hmm. the fruit is what's feeding you. Mm -hmm. And that stems from the hand Mm -hmm. that is you Mm -hmm. of the seeds that you threw in the ground Mm -hmm. to grow. Mm -hmm. And see, with 
you just said right now about your parents, mm-hmm. that's getting below the soil. Mm-hmm. That's getting deep. Mm-hmm. That's getting deep. Mm-hmm. And, and I want you to know that you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. See, whoever raised you, mm-hmm. whoever wiped your butt 5,000 times, whoever tied your shoes a thousand times, taught you how to walk, talk, eat, that is your first love. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know something. Okay. You will never know a love on this planet mm-hmm. greater than that. Beyond that is wishful thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And All see, right. we sure. bring significant others to meet mm-hmm. the greatest thing that we're ever going to know in our life, that which loved us mm-hmm. and, and manifested us to okay. be who we are. We bring those significant others in front of them. Mm-hmm. And then we think that they don't know. They hate me. Mm-hmm. Why would somebody wipe your butt 5,000 times, tie your shoes a thousand times, teach you how to walk, talk, eat, and burp to hate on you? Right. So that's just our own ignorance. Mm-hmm. They did that to see you win. Mm-hmm. But what happens is they can see things that our young selves can't see. Right. And that is, I wiped your butt 5,000 times. I'm looking at this fool and I know he won't do it once. And that's, mm. yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're looking for that type of love from the parents mm-hmm. in the significant other. And you have to be okay with this, that you'll never receive it. So it's like, if you find a person that's okay, and this is going back to the paralyzed thing, mm-hmm. if you're paralyzed, would you still love me? Mm-hmm. If you find a person that would willing to wipe your butt 10 times through physical therapy, mm-hmm. they love you. And I won't say just enough, Yeah. but they're never going to be that parent that's going to go 5,000 times. Right. So don't compare it to that. Like, right. don't say like, oh, I'm looking for this. Because it, all of us are going, looking back for that center. And I yeah. feel like especially men, they want that love like their mother well, gives We're them. not even conscious of that. And I think that that was, uh, that was indoctrination of, of a lie. Mm. And that is, you only get one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's that, that's yeah. 5,000. Yeah. That'd that's be it. that 5,000, okay? Mm-hmm. That's the 5,000. Now, beyond that, I will say this to you. In our lifetime, God will only give us one Mm -hmm. that's willing to love you more than they love Mm. themselves. And when you find that, you better hold on. Mm. Because the odds of you find that again is not in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. It's not in this lifetime. So don't let go of a good thing chasing Mm -hmm. a crackhead. Mm. Not a crackhead. A crackhead. (laughs) For my love angels out there that probably only had one parent mm-hmm. they can be inspirational and toxic at the same time oh mm. yes but true. this is the thing they did what they're supposed to do you know you have a lot of people walking around that you know, i talk to a lot of kids and they always say my father wasn't there and this and that well maybe your father didn't ask to have you and mm-hmm. your mother tricked your daddy a lot of a lot of people trick babies yeah you know There was a stop sign on your daddy's head and your mother thought that was going to make it stop. Mm. And it didn't. Mm -hmm. Because when you start off a relationship with somebody running from you, Mm -hmm. it's going to end with them running from you. Mm -hmm. But when you start off a relationship, when you turned around and embraced what was chasing you, it's only going to end when you should say it is. Mm -hmm. See, that's the importance of that. I remember I was going inside of a store and this uh, lady asked me for some spare change and she had her baby in a uh, stroller. I said, let me take care of my business. I come out. I got you. I came out. He said, sir, remember? I said, oh, yeah. Um, before I give this to you, can I ask you a question? She said, yeah. I said, where's your baby father? Mm. He's locked up. Mm-hmm. I said, so tell me the name. He said, what do you mean? Tell me the name of the guy that you left chasing him. Mm. She said, Michael, women and men know right away who they left. To chase nonsense. Mm, I sure do. Okay. And for every woman that tell me, in man, who left them, mm-hmm. I guarantee you, if we go back to high school, mm-hmm. we can find somebody that would have never left them. Mm-hmm. If you would have told him, I need you to be a doctor, he would have been a doctor. Mm-hmm. I know you, you want to be in a relationship with me, you need to be an astronaut. Mm-hmm. He would have been an astronaut mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. But there's no instruction manual. There's indoctrination of ignorance Mm -hmm. to chase nonsense. Mm -hmm. And when you get further down the road and it don't work out, then that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to take the time out to turn around and embrace what's chasing you. Mm -hmm. And if something's running from you, Mm -hmm. it's going to end with it running from you. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Yeah. Let it be. Because one thing 
one thing about love, ain't no doubt in it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Ain't no doubt in love. Ain't no doubt in love. Yeah. You know what it is. I'm going to wrap this all up. Okay. I'm going to wrap this all up. And that is everything that we've talked about Mm -hmm. truly is love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It truly is love. And we all are bound to each other by the reality on this planet that we're human beings. Right. And being human, we all go through things. Mm -hmm. And just because you think that what you've been through was unbearable, Mm -hmm. you're here. Mm -hmm. You can't talk to me or nurture me about being raped mm. if you ain't been through it. Mm. If you don't know that the cold showers don't do nothing, mm. it's still going to be there when I wake up. Mm-hmm. See, But if you've been through it, mm-hmm. the trials and tribulations of life, mm-hmm. and you're talking to someone that's been raped, then they can give them hope. Because mm-hmm. you can let them know I got through it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by letting go, they no longer have control over you. Mm -hmm. See? And I really appreciate you guys Mm. because this was needed. I feel that some of our love angels out there, Mm -hmm. they feel it because I feel it at this table. Mm -hmm. I feel it at this table. Remember, your trials and tribulations of life are given to you so that you can minister to those to get through it. Mm-hmm. They're not to break you. Mm-hmm. You were chosen. Mm-hmm. You were chosen. And remember, no one can touch the soul but God. This is just the flesh. Right. This is just the flesh. Yeah. I definitely need y'all to come back. Mm-hmm. Because I can see on the teleprompter that the love angels is feeling this. Mm-hmm. And they need more of it. Mm-hmm. And always remember... Like I say every week, until next time, remember, make sure that loving you is a priority thing for you to do. Mm. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Um, I had a, uh, a message I couldn't, I couldn't answer last time. So I like to get to that, uh, in this segment, uh, before I even dive into anything. And that is Stephanie from Santa Barbara. I hear you. Remember you were ready to walk out and just close the door and end it all. And I told you, be patient, just let it come to you and look what happened. It wasn't what you thought it was. And you still have your husband, you still have your kids, and you still have a beautiful relationship. And, you know, that goes into what we were talking about. What is this tree of life? What is this tree of life that we're feeding off of? You know, the fruit is stems from the labor that we cultivated and put into its growth. And just the most fragile thing on that tree, the fig that holds the fruit can easily be broken. And that can easily be broken just by rumors, haters, miserable people. And as we wake up, I often tell my love angels, you have to protect the most valuable thing that you own in your life. More valuable than any material possession that you own, and that is your happiness. A lot of miserable people out there. You know, without your happiness, you don't have your health. Without your health, you don't have your your sanity. You know, without your sanity, you're no good for yourself or no one else. So you have to remember I said before, and that is 
do research in your relationships without destroying your relationships. And when you do that, often enough, you'll find out, man, the answers are here. And my relationship didn't have to change. As a matter of fact, I can embrace my relationship even more because it wasn't what I thought it was. So from the fruit to the fig, to the branch, to the stem. And as I said before, the fruit is that which you eat. The fig is consumed of haters, people just running their mouths, not knowing what they're talking about, trying to make you as miserable as them. And the leaf itself, what is the purpose of a leaf on the tree? That's to yield the energy to allow the tree to grow. And that's influences in the branch itself. That's your family that holds it all together. And we left off on the stem. And that was your perception of what you think life is. But as we get deeper into the tree itself, now we're at the trunk. Symbolically, Art, Dr. O, what is the, what is, what is the trunk? What is the significance of the trunk? Well, the trunk is where are you planted? Where did you grow up? It has a tremendous influence on who you are. You know, some people say it doesn't matter where you're from. It matters where you're at. Well, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. You know, I remember uh, growing up, my environment profoundly had an enormous influence on who I am. And it wasn't a positive one. So my mother took it upon herself to put me in a private school. And in the public school, before I went to the private school, I used to get in fights every day. Uh, principal came, cussed her out, bit her, kicked her, all that. And, you know, there was a lot of issues going on, not only in my family, but beyond my family and the environment that I, that I grew up in. And my mother put me in a private school, and that had a profound effect on my life. It completely changed my thinking, whereas in the public school, I went to your praise for fighting. But in the private school, you're only praised for your academics. When we took field trips, we took field trips to their mansions and their yachts. And it allowed me the ability to relate from the streets to Wall Street. You know, it profoundly had a nice effect on cultivating me into being who I am. And that's the trunk, you know, where you grow up can have a profound effect on who you are. And as we get below the soil, below the soil, what is the roots symbolically? What does the roots mean? Well, symbolically, the roots is the unseen action. The unseen action. And I need a lot of unseen action in my life. I got over 100 pounds of woo, so that's... um. What's my man, The Rock? He gets up early in the morning while most people are sleeping. He gets chiseled in. He puts it in the work. And that's something that I need to do if you want to see the results. The roots is the unseen actions that you put into the manifestation of that which you want your life to be. And if that action isn't there, then your perception of what you would like it to be May not be an accurate one, but ultimately, the actions, that's the roots. Now, come back next week. We're going to tune into some other things that we'd like to talk about with the tree. But we also have some guests coming on the show. So it's going to be very nice for us to talk about many other things. And like I always say, remember, make sure that loving you is a priority thing for you to do. Until next time, my love angels, keep love numero uno to you. Welcome back to the Art of Love with Dr. O, and I'm yours truly, Dr. O, the love doctor. Got a lot of, a lot of questions coming in. You know, all you guys out there, are you love angels out there that want to catch me out there? You can catch me on the Art of Love uh, pod. You can look me up in uh, any of your questions that you have. You can go ahead and send them into the Art of Love pod, and I'll answer as many of these questions as possible. There's definitely a lot of them, and the ones that I can't get to, I apologize. Hopefully, we can get to it in the next segment on another show. But 
Uh, let's take a look at some of them. I have Kendall from Menifee. My wife has become overly bossy, bossy and controlling. Starting to affect the way I feel about her. What can I do to not dislike her? My wife is being bossy. What'd you say? What'd you say? My wife is overly bossy and controlling and is starting to affect the way I feel about her. Well, one of the things that you can do to alleviate that is, of course, communication. Now. Let's be honest with yourself. When you met her, was she bossy? Don't don't try and change her, man. Don't try and take them stripes off that zebra, man. You wanna you want a Clydesdale horse, man? You know it was a zebra when you met it. But what you can say to her in a very nice tone, very nice voice, you know, you actually have a romantic evening. Take her out to eat, wine her, dine her, have a great time, and let her know, you know, baby, um, I'm not going nowhere. Why you, why, you, why you say that? Well, it just feels as if though, it seems as if though you're, you're calling out things that when we started this relationship off, it, it just didn't exist in the beginning. And it's not that I have a problem with you actually calling shots and being bossy. My only dilemma is if that's the position that you want in the relationship, I'm going to need you to stay bossy. I don't want you to be part-time bossy. I'm going to need you to be full-time. So when that mortgage is due, I'm going to need you to step up and be a boss. When that car note is due, I'm going to need you to step up and be a boss. Huh? When that Edison bill is due, I'm going to need you to stay a boss. Don't don't part-time boss it. Because I don't have a problem going grocery shopping, going to the mall shopping, and doing the things that, you know, I need to do to allow you to be a boss. So if you want to be a boss, baby, I'm going to need you to stay full-time with it. Now, duck if that hand come quick, but, you know, it just 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 make a joke out of it. And, and and let her know how you feel. You know, communication is uh, everything. But, you know, if she started out a certain way and she's still that same person, don't lie to yourself. Don't, don't create things in your relationship that doesn't need to exist. Who do we have next? Lorenzo from Van Nuys. My girlfriend works in an adult industry. It makes me jealous. Should I leave the relationship? Well, Lorenzo, did you meet her in the adult industry? Because if she worked at the library and she was a librarian, and then all of a sudden next week she's she wants to go out of nowhere and work for the adult industry, then you have issues. Then there's something, there's something going on. But if you met her in the adult industry, Oh, they take care of themselves. They clean up real well. So, you know, don't 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 surprise yourself with things that you already knew. You know, if you want, you can go work at a strip club or you can go join the adult industry if that's going to make you happy. Or if it's too much, even though you met her in the adult industry and now it's weighing on you, well, then you might have to consider uh, sitting down and speaking with her and uh, exiting out the relationship and. You can still be friends, you know, but, you know, as far as the commitment that you would like to get out of her, you know, if you don't want your lady working in the adult industry, you shouldn't have met her in the adult industry. But it, like I said, it's different if she was a librarian and she chose like a year and a half in the relationship. I'm going to go work at an adult industry. And then there's other things you need to discuss. And it has nothing to do with the adult industry. There's other things going on. So my advice to you, remember, what protects you from the nonsense of others is just you loving you. So make sure, Lorenzo, that you're loving yourself the way that you're supposed to. Because I've told you before many times, and I say again, on this planet, there's only one you. 
And no man is capable of being greater than you being yourself. So when you consider yourself a gift to someone, they can never cheat on you. They can never lie to you. They can only cheat on themselves and lie to themselves. To lose you, there's only one you. Rick from Charlotte, North Carolina. Most women say, I'm too big. It's uncomfortable. What can I do about that? Mr. Rick with the 13 bent to the left with the Hercules vein. Minus 11. Stop stroking your ego, Chris. Cut it out, okay? The world is a shoe store. And if you're walking out of that shoe store with the wrong size shoe on, that's on you. But I guarantee you on this planet, there's a shoe that'll fit you. And there's some shoes out there that it might be too big for you. So don't stroke your ego too much. If you think you really got something, take a picture of it and go grocery shopping. Throw it on the counter. See if you make it out the store with them groceries, huh? Send it in for your car over three months. See if that repo man don't beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Send a picture in for your mortgage, man. And see if you don't lose the house, bro. You know, don't, don't stroke your ego too much because often enough, when a lady tell you certain things, because men are easy, men are so easy. You know, if I can get an extra thousand dollars out of you just by going, <laughs> they gonna give it to you, man. You know, women will gas you. Those are the type of things you got to be careful because they'll gas you because those are, that's the type of language that you hear right before they give you a kid. Yeah, so be careful. You do me, you hurt. Your ego's getting bigger and bigger. And lo and behold, before you know it, I'm pregnant. So be careful. Don't gas yourself up too much. We have Sarah from Houston, Texas. I want to get my breast enlarged, but my boyfriend doesn't want me to. He says I'm perfect how I am. What should I do? Well, Sarah. What should you do? You know, it's your body. It's your body. And no one can tell you what to do with your body. If it makes you happy to have them, then he should love you with them. Remember, what you do with your body is completely for you. And you shouldn't allow anyone to stop you from being happy. But at the same time, if he told you you're fine just the way that you are, then Listen to him, but only you can make you happy because he can tell you, um, I don't want you to get him. You're fine just the way you are. And then he go hook up with somebody else that has him. So you have to do you. So hopefully we've got through enough of these uh, Ask Dr. O questions. Remember, you can find me at the Art of Love pod and ask me any other questions that you would like. As for the future. Tune in. I look forward to hearing from you and all my love angels out there. I appreciate you. Continue to bring more angels into our family. And remember, until next time, you make sure that loving you is a priority thing for you to do. You know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people out here have a lot of pet peeves. And one of the biggest pet peeves I know a lot of people probably have is, uh, when somebody lies to him because you know the truth is the foundation of our relationship with communication but you know think about this the audacity of you to get upset at someone lying to a liar you know i'm an honest person I'm, i tell the truth yeah we say that but i know that if I was standing in the room with you looking in the mirror. I'm pretty sure the soul of you would probably say, Art, they lie to me too. See? So remember, let's start being honest with ourselves so we can be honest with others. And also remember, until next time, make sure that loving you is a priority thing for you to do.